Hi, and welcome to Introduction to XML, part of IBM's technical briefing series. As XML is used in more applications and services, it's more important than ever to manage this data effectively. In this module of an Introduction to XML, we take a look at topics related to creating and managing XML data. First, let's take a look at the characteristics of XML data. XML provides a neutral, flexible way of exchanging data between different systems, applications, and organizations. Data is maintained in an extensible, self-describing format to allow for ever-evolving business needs. XML can describe very structured data and enforce the structure through XML schemas, but can also describe semi-structured data, which is prevalent in content-oriented applications. XML provides a straightforward means of capturing and maintaining the data associated with electronic transactions. Organizations as well as entire industries have standardized XML schemas to promote the exchange of data, and they are continually evolving these schemas to meet changing business needs. These efforts include schemas in the insurance and financial industries, as well as in retail, healthcare, and standards such as DITA, for authoring, maintaining, and publishing documentation. Here's a common scenario in banking, where the use of XML, as well as related standards and schemas, allow for more efficiency. A large bank generates customized reports for clients. A report request is created in XML. Requests and reports are stored in a database table. Raw data also exists in relational tables. Now, XML native storage and query allows for easy search of data requests, and XML publishing functions allow reports to be published easily. Now, here's a typical scenario in the insurance industry. A large auto insurance company offers many types of coverage. It uses XML to describe benefits based on car type. New features need to be added, removed, or edited every year. With native storage and publishing functions, adding new features is simple with no changes necessary to the database schema. And here we have a scenario common in the financial services industry. A large financial management company generates new tax forms. Each form has a different set of fields or schema, which requires thousands of tables and possibly generating hundreds of generic columns. With XML, an XML column can store various tax forms and an XML index can quickly locate any particular form with interesting data. But what is different about XML data? The evolution of the web led to requirements for new kinds of business data, for example, medical records or insurance records. XML is a natural choice since it allows for storing this kind of data because it is extensible and self-describing. But XML data is also highly variable in structure. It mixes data with metadata. Data can contain hierarchies of varying depth. Data has an intrinsic order. It may also be sparse, and it can often contain large amounts of text. This need to standardize XML management led to the development of several standards. Managing XML data is easier with XQuery, an XML query language, XSLT, enhancement to an existing language for style sheets and transforms, and XPath, a common subset of XQuery and XSLT. XML Query, or XQuery, is a powerful way to search XML data for specific information. Sharing common traits with XPath, such as traditional XPath expressions, XQuery can be used to define searches of XML documents and databases. XQuery is defined in terms of the data model and the expression context. The data model defines information input into an XSLT or XQuery processor. It also defines all permissible values of expressions in the XSLT, XQuery, and XPath languages. In the expression context, static context is information that is available during static analysis of the expression prior to its evaluation. Dynamic context is information that is available at the time the expression is evaluated. Here is a basic example of XQuery, a simple query in standard syntax searching for information about a book, such as the author, title, 
and the year the book was published. Extensible Style Sheet Language Transformations, or XSLT, is a language that specifies how to transform XML documents into other XML documents. It allows transforming of XML documents into certain non-XML formats, such as text or HTML. To achieve a transformation, an XSLT style sheet can be applied to an XML document using an XSL processor. In this example of XSLT, soccer results are captured in an XML document. Viewed through the web browser, the system cannot come up with a sensible layout to display the data. Some other mechanism is needed to tell the system how to display the data through a browser. This is where the style sheet comes in. The style sheet is a declarative set of rules that defines how information elements identified by tags in the source document should be rendered. Cascading style sheets, or CSS, is popular, but for this example, Extensible Style Sheet Language, or XSL, is used to define what the browser will present. The basic processing paradigm is pattern matching, meaning that an XSLT style sheet consists of a set of templates with if-then conditions. There is a conflict resolution algorithm applied when several rules match in the same input. The input XML document is treated as a tree structure, and each template rule is applied to a node in the tree. And now the results of the style sheeting formatting applied to the XML data can be viewed through the browser. XML path language, or XPath, is a syntax in a data model for addressing parts of an XML document. Designed to be a little language that can be used for application-neutral processing within XML systems, XPath is a declarative language that is used for referring to parts of an XML document. XPath expressions are used for locating a set of nodes or elements in a given XML document. Many XML technologies, like XSLT and XQuery, use XPath extensively. The simplest form of XPath looks like a downward tree path with optional predicates. XPath is used for finding nodes that match a pattern. Each step returns a list of nodes in document order, and these nodes in turn provide context for the next step. The essential components are the root node, the element nodes, attribute nodes, and comment nodes. Let's take a brief look at the XML data model. XML provides a better data model for many new applications because of its flexibility, schema versatility, and hierarchical nature. It handles semi-structured or unstructured data, for example, healthcare records, biological data, contracts, or insurance claims. It handles nested or complex data, for example, manuals, books, catalogs, bills, and land records. It handles data with changing or evolving schemas, for example, forms, changing industry standard documentation, as well as new product versions. It handles data with null, multiple, or unknown values, for example, phone numbers, or patient records. It can also be easily managed and stored through databases, such as PureXML and DB2. PureXML part of IBM DB2 is an example of a technology that uses query languages, storage and indexing technologies, and other features to support XML data. DB2 natively stores and processes XML data in its inherent hierarchical structure, as opposed to treating XML data as plain text or converting it into a relational format. It provides query capability, indexing inside of XML documents, publishing relational data as XML, XML schema validation capability, and database utilities and monitoring features. In this module of an introduction to XML, we took a look at understanding XML data, querying XML data with technologies such as XSLT, XPath, and XQuery. We took a brief look at the XML data model, pure XML, as well as XML industry scenarios. Join us in other modules as we take an introductory look at XML, a closer look at XML, 
and XML and Web 2.0. And visit IBM Developer Works to connect with technical communities on this and other technologies.